It is the Frank and Friends Show. Hi, I'm Frank Murphy. I'm Catherine Frady. Well, hi, Catherine. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Very well, thank you. I always Good. enjoy doing the show with you, and we appreciate all of you uh, watching, liking, subscribing. Smashing that button. That's super duper important uh, to subscribe and, and click the notifications like Catherine. Absolutely, because when you smash that button, you get the notifications. You get to find out first. I think it's two buttons. I think there's a subscribe button and then a notification bell, right? Yes. So you, you hit the subscribe, yeah. and then on to the right of the screen, that's where you get the yeah. notifications. So do that. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you really, really like Catherine, I mean us, <laughs> uh, you can check out our uh, delicious uh, Frank and Friends merchandise. frankandfriendsshow.com backslash store. I was watching... Um, I looked at our channel on um, on the big screen TV, oh, nice. and as you go through each uh, thumbnail, mm -hmm. it starts moving and picks a random bit of action from somewhere in the episode. Nice. Like on the Ice Bears episode, it's Kayla and me, where Kayla Mo was there, and she's doing the thing with the puck toward the camera. Nice. Well, there's another episode closer to Christmas, and we're just scamming through it, and, and the thumbnail is us sitting there, very polite. <laughs> and then when it clicks to the action part. It's, we're unfolding the giant beach towel. That's hilarious. And it, just, it looks silly. <laughs> I love but it. But it would make me click on it, that's for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you get to choose those or do they randomly? No, they randomly generate them from somewhere in the episode. And I don't know if they pick something where there's a lot of movement. Right. Or if, oh, well, I'll show it to you later. Yeah. We can go look at the TV. That's exciting. Um, I also have news that we signed up to sponsor something. Okay. And by we, I mostly mean me. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't know about it, that makes sense. <laughs> so tell me, what are we sponsoring? <laughs> uh, we are sponsoring the Akima Cabaret. Fantastic. This Sounds is fun. singing and dancing. I can sponsor that. Yes. <laughs> so the Akima Club of Knoxville is uh, celebrating its 75th anniversary. And every other year, they have the Akima Cabaret. And I have to admit that I am jealous, I was always jealous of the Akima Cabaret because, in a, in a good way, because it was like the front page Follies, but I was never able to go because it seemed like they always had the Akima Cabaret on the same weekend as the Gatlinburg Improv Festival. Oh, wow. Yeah. So my wife and I would say, oh, but our friend Mary Sue Griner is in the Akima Cabaret. We should go see it. Or, yeah. or her sister-in-law, Mary Kay Griner, is in the Akima Cabaret. We should go see it. Well, anyway, they changed the date of the Akima Cabaret. It's not, first of all, there's no more Gatlinburg Improv Fest. Secondly, um, the Akima Cabaret is going to be February 18th and 19th this year. Oh, that's year. coming up. Yeah. And it's going to be at the Mill and Mine. So my wife and I can go. Fantastic. And I, I was talking to... Um, the ladies over there, Harriet Miller and the gang, and they said that uh, they were looking for a media sponsor. I said, well, you know, I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> we can sponsor you today. We can be, we can be your media sponsor. <laughs> and she said, okay. I said, That's well, awesome. how about that? I love uh, it. I said, we'll be it. So uh, you go to akimaclub.org and get the tickets before they're sold out. The Saturday night show on the 19th is already sold out because oh, wow. the big sponsors already buy, they buy up all the tickets for right. Saturday mostly. Um, there are still tickets available for the Friday evening performance, which is when my wife and I are going to go. And then there's one on the afternoon of Saturday the 19th, um, which is great. The Mill and Mine. So s musical parodies, you know, song and dance. Um, the theme this year is the Roaring Twenties When Decades Collide. Oh, that sounds amazing. So they're taking s songs from the 1920s and the 2020s. <sighs> Doing a mashup. Yeah. Well, that'll be fun. I know. Oh, well, make sure you go on Friday and say hi to Frank. I will. I, oh, yeah, of course I will. <laughs> I, I'll be there. But Catherine... They give grant money, the, the money they raise for tickets. I mean, they, they raise a significant chunk of change. Um, and over the years, I mean, they, they usually each cabaret are awarding, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 wow. in grant money to different organizations. You wow. know, 3000 here, 3000 there. That's amazing. And a long list. So uh, I would hope that you'll apply for a grant. I actually did check it out because you sent me that website. Yeah. And I went and looked at it and I downloaded the application. And I've already see, talked to Brandon about it. We're yeah. ready to go. They support the arts. They do. And they support other things too. I mean, I've seen everything from um, Knoxville Symphony to Ladies of Charity. So we're in everything in between. That's wonderful. So I'm excited about that. So we're going to mention that at each of our shows up through the um, February 17th show. We'll mention that, you know, Kima Cabaret, February 18th and 19th at the Mill and Mine. And so if you go and you support the Kima Cabaret, 
Yeah. Does that mean you're supporting these other organizations that yeah. they support? Yeah, they don't keep they they don't keep the money. They give it away. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, you know, if if they have to pay, I mean, I know how to. You and I both have staged events before. You've got right. to rent the room. Of course. You know, yeah, there's it's, some it's not cost. like it's not yeah. like the venue is donating the space. <laughs> That's a shame. But it costs money to make money. Yeah. And um, yeah, so obviously they're able to give do- tens of thousands of dollars each time they do this. That's, That's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, so good. Hakima. All right, now. I hear somebody commented on Mo. We've had multiple comments. I lo- we love your YouTube comments. And we got one after the Ice Bears episode from Tanya Cinnamon, who, um, she's a photographer and she's got an eye for beauty. So she commented on you and your hair. She liked my hair, which made me feel so good because I'm terrible at doing hair. But it looked cool. <laughs> it, it looked like it had been done by a space alien with tentacles instead of hands. You know, that's the only way I can yeah. make a hairdo is if it looks like it was done by a space alien. <laughs> exactly. So, we, so, that, so thank you, Tanya, for that. And then we have Renee who occasionally comments. But it's weird because it seems like half of Renee's comments, I get notified that there's a comment and then it disappears. So I don't know oh, if you're deleting them. Or editing them, but um, it happened on um, on Tuesdays after Tuesday's episode. I got a comment from Renee, who goes by Katja, saying that she loved seeing Mo or loved us referencing Mo. You know, in the last Tuesday episode, we had Mo on the show. Mo, my dead uh, tortoise, who I had mm-hmm. freeze dried, and then he was not on the. I, I got that all backwards. He was on the Thursday episode, and I was telling Frank Jr. about it and. Uh, and Katja Renee commented on the two at the next one where Mo was not on it. She said Mo should be the mascot. Mo should be on every episode. We could put him right here. Ah, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. I didn't even know. <laughs> what a great surprise. <laughs> great minds. <laughs> So I've just unveiled Mo, and uh, he's now there. Oh, that's nice. In front of the potted plant that I uh, got in trouble for showing a few episodes back. That's perfect, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we have a turtle. And it's not the first time a turtle has been a mascot of something I've been a part of. What else? Well, I used to be a color guard instructor. You know, with the the flags and the marching band and the, like, while the rivals. While you were a grown up. Yeah, like a grown up. <laughs> As a okay. grown up. All right. Because I I used to do that when I was in high school. Yeah. And then. Yeah, while I was in college, I was I was a color guard instructor, but for some reason, even though the high school that I was working at was the uh, Wildcats, mm-hmm. the color guard team decided that they were like turtles. Huh. You know that you know slow and steady wins the race. Oh, tough see? exterior, gooey on the inside. You know, gooey on the inside. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I relate to those things though. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah one time I had to go on this stupid. Um, like eighth grade retreat where they try to just, uh, and everyone has to describe basically their spirit animal. And I, I picked the box tortoise because it can nice. seal up all the way. And um, we, you know, when you said, tell me what you said again about the tortoise. It was slow and steady wins the race, hard shell, or like tough exterior, hard shell. on the inside. Yeah, yeah, the slow, now the slow and steady part, that was always my advice to especially other students, but including my own son, Frank Jr., is be the tortoise. Yeah. Because I was a hare. I think I may have told you this before. I was a hare in, okay. in high school and college, meaning I would procrastinate, and then I was smart enough to pass the class, but if I had put in a little more effort, I probably would have gotten a higher grade. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, I, mean, I probably got, I got, you know, A minuses, and I could have gotten A pluses or whatever. I, I, sure. But Frank Jr., already smart, so we always said, you can't do whatever until your homework is done. So he got in the habit at a very early age of always just... Uh, knocking out the homework and being the tortoise. That's good. And we were talking to him over the weekend about uh, the episode where Mo was. He said he saw the thumbnail and saw Mo in the thumbnail. So here, you can see him again. Um, <laughs> and he reminded me that when Mo was little, we were living in California and the house we were renting at the time had an enormous grapefruit tree in the back. Okay. And I didn't know this, but he and his sister used to take these grapefruits and roll them behind Mo and pretend that he was Indiana Mo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like coming out of the cave. And they like would roll the, the, roll the grapefruit and Mo, yeah, and Mo would be you know, you know, walking and they would roll the grapefruit behind him and pretend, oh no, Mo. Hurry, <laughs> Mo, go, go. <laughs> go, Mo, go. <laughs> so I found that, I found that very, uh, very amusing. That is amusing. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad that Mo survived, you know, the rolling grapefruit. 
Yeah. And that wasn't, you know, his demise in the end. Yeah. Now, uh, it's, it's February already. Um, you know, I, I know we had a February 1st episode, but here we are, February 3rd. And um, we didn't wish anyone a happy new year or happy new month. That's right. It's the year of the tiger. Now, um, what's the old joke? Oh, I'm still writing year of the rat on my checks. <laughs> I don't know how... Whenever last that. year was. You look up whatever oh, last okay. year was. And you just... Yeah. And you say... Oh, you're the tiger. I'm still running. You're the rat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. It's a vaudeville type joke. Yeah, you know. I get it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, how how are you celebrating um, the Lunar New Year? I'm not. Well, I'm here, so I'm. Ce- <laughs> I guess I'm celebrating on this podcast. But I found it interesting because James is a tiger. Like. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, you know, each year your that husband you're born, is a, okay. he's, he was born in the year of the tiger. Yeah. So that's, you know, they have all, I was reading a little bit about it and I sent him a little message. Is this like horoscopes? Like, kind of. I mean, do you know anything about these well, animals? I, yes, the because, thing? well, I mean, I've celebrated um, Chinese New Year many times over the years and I've certainly seen the placemat where it's got all of the animals in the years and you and the little personality sketch, but I didn't remember any of it. Yeah, it's sort of like... I don't even remember what what, I am, what animal I am. Well, I looked it up. Yeah? You're an ox. Oh, stubborn as an ox, is that stubborn. what you're saying? Yeah, I don't know actually what it says about an ox. Okay. I'm a rooster. <laughs> so. <laughs> rooster, huh? And you know what it says about roosters? Cocky? It says we're pretty awesome. <laughs> At least that we tell people that we're awesome and that that can be kind of tiresome. (laughs) Well, you're a diva. It also says that roosters are good actresses and actors. Okay. But they should be in in news broadcasting. So also if you want us to (laughs) promote your shows. (laughs) It's a good choice, Akima Club. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right. So I'm well, not sure that much about the ox, but the tigers are very loyal. Well, let me look up. Um, I'll, let me Google ox then. If I yeah, see, to see it. what is um, personality born in year of ox. Okay. People born in the year of the ox are strong, reliable, fair, and conscientious. Inspiring confidence in others. Would you say any of those are accurate? They're also calm, patient, methodical, and can be trusted. Yeah. Although they say very little, they can be very opinionated. <laughs> well, the saying very little isn't correct, but... <laughs> well, I mean, what you do is you hide your opinions because you, <laughs> you don't want people to dislike you. They believe strongly in themselves, but are also stubborn and hate to fail or be challenged. Okay, that, well, I think that's true of many people, yeah. though. Yeah. Don't you? It, it I is. mean, that's pretty accurate. Do you need to look up another animal? We, while we're... We need, let's look up the, the rooster. All right. So they are deep thinkers. And the rooster's personality is considered to be honest, bright, communicative, ambitious, capable, and warm-hearted. Isn't that nice? Oh, okay. (laughs) Strong self-respect and seldom relying on others are their basic characteristics. You know, that's not a great thing sometimes. I should look up, I I I guess it would be more complicated, but I should look up like, you know, Artie Rocket, because he and I are so similar, and it would be interesting. It would be interesting. Um, But people, I'm looking up uh, people born this year, so your husband, the tiger, <laughs> you should do that every time. Oh, well, my husband's a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, our leader, born leaders who walk and talk assertively and inspire respect. They are courageous and energetic, love a challenge or competition, and are prepared to take risks. I know some people who are expecting babies in the year of the tiger. Well, so, so that's uh, what you can expect. So you got that to look forward to. But here's one that might describe the rooster to you. Yeah. As most of them are born pretty or handsome, they prefer to dress up. That's you. I do like to put on. Is this one of your? One um, of the roosters' qualities what? is that they like to wear like bright colors and you like know, a peacock. Like a peacock, yeah. What uh, What are you wearing today, madam? This is actually a Catherine print by Vinick, by my friend. And Catherine meaning you. Catherine meaning me. This print was named after me. Oh, it's nice. Thanks. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You want to make sure if you're listening to the podcast on uh, any of the um, various things. First of all, thank you. Because apparently um, I had done, I made some mistake with the RSS feed, or I updated the RSS feed, and it stopped updating on several of the podcast apps. So I, oh, no. I spent some time trying to fix all of them. So I think I'm caught up. So if you're listening, you, but you might want to check the YouTube anyway, because I think more and more people are just saying, oh, "The heck with it! I'm just going to watch the YouTube." That's yeah. Especially with That's Catherine, good. she's a rooster over here. <laughs> she's a lady rooster. <laughs> 
which I think what they have to do in, I think in uh, Cock County, I think they actually have to call their um, sports teams. You know, like we have Lady Vols, and in Cock County, I, I, they use some kind of rooster as the mascot, or probably just, you know. Oh, nice. They call them the cocks, so they got to be the lady. That's The lady roosters. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm an I mean, aging lady rooster, so, you know. I guess I could look that up. Cock County, Tennessee High School mascot, because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're known for cockfighting over there. Hmm. Cow County High School mascot. It's a, it's a strange mascot to actually... Have you... We're talking all about all these mascots. Have you seen the movie Mascot? The Fighting Cocks. And what are the... Um, I, I don't know. Have I? I it's don't hysterical. know. I must not have. It's, I must not have. It's by the same people who made, like, um, Best in Show. I love that. It's hysterical. If you haven't seen Mascot, you have to Well, then I'm it. going to. All right. And they, there's this one moment in time where all the mascots come to compete in, like, this competition. And they show up in their costumes. And they have, like, a whole routine worked oh. out. And it's pretty hysterical. Well, I have um, hosted a mascot dance party, a um, dance contest. Okay. And then I entered it as myself because I thought I would be the, I was the only mascot for that radio station. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there's video of that floating around somewhere. And uh, I think the Tennessee Smokies sponsor a mascot softball game every year nice. where the mascots from other teams and businesses show up. And they play each other? Yeah. That's pretty great. All right. Yeah. You know who needs a mascot? Maureen's yep. Barn House. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> not what it's called. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want coffee? I tried to give you coffee before the show. I, I really did. <laughs> You know who needs a mascot? <laughs> you know, the Middleburg Barn does. Maureen's Barn House. <laughs> the Middleburg Barn at Fox Chase Farm, an amazing barn ballroom just outside the Washington, D.C. area where you can have your charitable event, you can have your performance, you can have your wedding reception. Yeah, or the wedding itself. Yeah. yeah, all of the things. It's a big old rustic luxury of a space with the Swarovski crystals and the huge barn doors that open up and look at the Blue Ridge Mountains. Sounds beautiful. And the filtered, whatever it is, magical air. What do they call it? Um, filtered magical air. Well, I think they actually there's a technical nice. term for it. Uh, ultraviolet disinfectant oh, light yeah. in the HVAC system to clean the air. That's great. They call it a Gucci barn. It sounds like a Gucci barn. Yeah. With all the crystals and... Yeah. Yeah. Do you think... Was the ultraviolet disinfectant light new that they added? Um, well, let's see. We've been doing the, the commercials for Maureen for a year now, and they had it back then. So she may have added it during... If she, if she added it during the pandemic, it was... Yeah, I guess she could have. Yeah. Probably did. But, but it was one of those things where it's also the newer buildings tend to have it anyway. Right. You know, so she's up to date with all of those, all of that stuff. 25-minute um, drive from Dulles Airport, 40 miles west of Washington, D.C., on an actual working horse farm. Which is great. And they have horses there, right? That's because that's what because I meant. Because it's actually a horse farm. <laughs> Well, I'm really just like knocking it out of the park. Maureen's Farmhouse. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about having us sponsor things? Woo. <laughs> yeah, I uh, know you're doing fine. But yes, uh, we need to take you there to show you the, um, the horses that either live there or will just come there for shows. They have horse shows with jumping. Oh, that that's kinda, fun. That kind of jumping that's horse fun. show. Yeah. Um, and there are people... There was a famous um, horse jumper from the Olympics who lived in that area. He was he passed away in his 90s, but he would come and jump at Maureen's place. That's great. And she's done all sorts of charity events and horse shows. And do they um, have races also? Um, not the, not like you would have at a uh, thoroughbred type. Not that kind of racing. Okay. But they would you know you have to go around and jump over these things in the best time. Right. So technically it is a race, but it's more of a obstacle course right. race than right. it is just go Technique fast as you can yeah, yeah 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 so it's it, that's very cool stuff that's and they have all sorts of other you know it's where they used to hunt foxes it's called fox chase farm the middleburg barn at fox chase farm so in that whole part of the area hunt country nice is you would get on your horse and put on your fancy hat and your dress or whatever you'd wear yeah, and you'd you go chase the foxes ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba yeah, right and you would jump over you know things right to catch the fox. Yeah, with the dogs and the hounds right. going with you. Yeah. So I don't know if it's called a steeplechase still or what they call it, but um, anyway, that why well, would we're not even trying to wrench you that part of it. We're trying to get you to have a party. <laughs> have a party at the Middleburg Barn. Yeah. Yeah. And enjoy all of the uh, the horse action. 
Um, they can seat up to 400 in there, but because it's an expandable or detractable space, you can, some people just do 100. Right. You know, you can, it doesn't matter. You can adjust the, the space to be just so. And that's the Middleburg Barn. Call Maureen at Maureen's Barn House, 540-687-5255. You'd like to give that number a try, Catherine? <laughs> 540-687-5255. Maureen's Barn House, also known <laughs> as the Middleburg, as the Middleburg Barn. Barn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Maureen. <laughs> no, it was funny. It was funny. Um, you know what today is? Today's one of my favorite Catholic days. Mm. What day is that? The Feast of St. Blaise. What is the Feast of St. Blaise? Well, it's a, it's a, you'd think a relatively small um, celebration in the overall arching you know, year of the church, but it's one that makes an impression on you as a kid. Okay. Because it's, you know, like Ash Wednesday is technically not a holy day of obligation, but everybody goes right. and you get the, you ashes, get the ashes on there. And that one I know. And yeah. everyone's familiar with it. Well, in February, February 3rd every year, which sometimes comes very close to, you know, relatively close to Ash Wednesday, um, they have the blessing of the throats. Okay. And that's what I remember as a kid because similar to Ash Wednesday is you'd have to line up and twice during Mass, not just for the communion, but for the blessing of the throats. Okay. And we'd all go up to the front and uh, the priest would have two candles that he would have crisscrossed. Mm -hmm. And usually you'd have them held in one hand with a ribbon connecting them. And they're not lit, by the way. I should point I out that they're not, say, they're not I was going to say, I'm not going to this. <laughs> You're going to put a candle at my throat? I'm like, wait, wait, what are we talking about here? Yeah. Well, by coincidence or not, um, the uh, usually the feast days are on, celebrated on the day whatever that whatever saint died and goes to heaven. You okay. know? That makes sense. So um, February 3rd is the Bishop Blaise, St. Blaise, who was a bishop in Armenia, I mean, way back. So you have two candle days in a row. February 2nd is Candlemas. So What is Candlemas? Candlemas is 40 days after Christmas. Okay. And it's the celebration of the presentation of the Lord at the temple. So when the baby is 40 days old, they would bring him to the temple and present him to the temple. That's nice. And that's 40 days later, and it's Candlemas. And that's why Groundhog Day is celebrated that day, because it's the end of the Christmas tide. Oh, makes sense. So Christmas tide is officially over as of yesterday. And they also bless all the candles right. that are going to be used throughout the course of the upcoming year. At the church. Well, then the next day they pull out two of these candles. And February second was also my grandmother's birthday. Groundhog Day. Yeah, Groundhog Day. Oh, I wonder. I guess Did she, she wasn't like born it? and presented at the same the same well, day. They probably wanted to know if your grandmother saw her own shadow or not. When she yeah, was born, because that would affect the winter. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think she did. Yeah. So. I mean, it's bogus anyway, because yeah. it, what they do is they pick 40 days after Christmas is pretty much 45 days after the start of winter-ish. Mm. So and we're not really so there's, winter. Yeah, so there's yeah. 45 days left in winter. It's the midpoint, regardless of what the groundhog says or does. Right. It's halfway through winter. We've got now six or seven weeks until spring. So then... Um, they bless the candles on the Candlemas. Then on the next day, St. Blaise, you have the blessing of the throats. So they would take these candles and you walk up to the priest and they put them up to your neck and they say, by the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may you be free of ailments of the throat and all other diseases. Well, that's nice. Because I think he was a maybe a doctor or something like that. And the story was on his way to be executed um, for being Christian, he um, saved some kid, he prayed for some kid who was choking on a fishbone. And the kid was saved through St. Blaise's prayers. And that's why St. Blaise is the patron saint of the throat. That's nice. I mean, yeah, where was he, throat. though, when you had that tuna fish bone? Well, I didn't eat it. I mean, he must have saved me because yeah, I, yeah. you know, I spat you, it you out. You had been blessed the year before. Mm. And that's what I missed it during the pandemic <laughs> because, you know, what are you going to do? Right. So I found a YouTube video of some guy blessing, you know, holding up the candles to the camera. But it's you, not, not I quite mean, the same. that's not quite the same. Can no. anybody, can anyone hold the candle up to you? Or does it have to be the... Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I suppose anyone could give you a blessing, but, the, you know, you want to use these blessed candles. Now, my friend Father Michael but Woods... But can you just bless some candles? I mean, there's actually a book for this, and there's a ritual that the priest would say... You can, they can, they have a book. Yeah. And you want to have your car blessed, they go... Okay, uh, you know, they have a blessing for cars, they have a blessing for pets, they have a blessing for houses, they have a blessing for chalk. They have a blessing wow. for the chalk that you, then you're supposed to take it and, and write, uh, 
a holy symbol of Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar on your door gem. Okay. CMB in the year, Epiphany, you know. But you get, they bless your chalk or they bless the bread that you're going to take home. They, they have blessings for everything. They've got a whole book of blessings. That's a lot. So I would assume that you've got to get the good blessing out of the book by the priest or the deacon so that you can have the candles that are... The candle blessing. Yeah. For the candles. Who's blessed candles. Now, my friend Father mm -hmm. Michael Woods had one that was like made. It was like a, it looked like a goalpost, right? That's it, fun. It was one, it had these two candles and then they came down and they were wrapped around each other. The wax was wrapped around each oh, other. Oh, cool. Like, like a braided, candelabra. Yeah. Like braided. And then he had, he would hold it there. And that was his St. Blaise candle. That's pretty and cool. And it had a special box for it. And, you know, where, where, the candles fit perfectly into the foam. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> the whole thing was candle. Yeah. One. Ca yeah. It was one piece, but it was two candles that had been you know twisted together at the base like and made. A candle over. Yeah. That's cool. I know. But he he's out in uh, Fairfield Glade now, so I wouldn't have to. Mm. You know, be quite a hike to go visit him. Well, maybe he could make a video. Well, I'm just thinking I might just drive over to the church today and uh, and just go to mass and and get the throat blessing because. You, know, you got to protect the instrument, Catherine. You got to. That's true. You got to protect the money. That is true. That's why I, that was my whole point. I know, but that, as long as they don't have flames coming up my throat, that would be the opposite. That would be the opposite. That of would the be blessing. the opposite of blessing your throat. It would be harming your throat, right? I would it would be probably burning. Probably run away screaming. <laughs> Look, if you walk into a if you walk into a Catholic church and you feel a burning sensation, yeah, you probably should. <laughs> If they sprinkle you with holy water and it starts to sizzle, that's a bad sign. <laughs> True, good point. Yeah. yeah. So if, if, they, if they give you the same blaze candles and it feels to you as if they're on fire. <laughs> may have yeah. something to think about. You might need to call the exorcist or somebody. <laughs> Well, all right. I guess we're almost done with uh, with this one, but I was going to ask you: Are you hungry? Not particularly. Oh, Do you right. have something that, delicious that you want me to eat? <laughs> well, I'm, Jerry is cooking a um, a roast oh. over in the crock pot, and she started it uh, early this morning before you came over. Oh, that sounds good. And I was worried. I thought, well, this is unusual because we don't usually cook. You know, I don't know when we usually cook pot roast, but we're so, you know, only once every few months anyway. Sure. And it happened to be on a Catherine Frady day. And I thought, oh, wow, Frady's going to come in and she's going to smell the lunch cooking I'm gonna or steal assume she's going to smell the dinner cooking and assume that we're feeding you lunch. So if you need lunch, you can stick around and I've got stuff. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. I've got I do chicken. love pot roast. Well, the pot roast is not going to be ready for a few more hours. You're going to have to wait. Oh, okay. but well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to wait. <laughs> but you're welcome if you're hungry. I mean, you can come over and we'll take care of you. But I also have lunch foods in the fridge if you need some. I oh, got some of that you. barbecue chicken from M&M that I love. Nice. I still need to check that place out. Didn't you have some at my party? Oh, yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a barbecue joint near here that's my favorite. So when I had my birthday party, we, we got the brisket and the chicken from there. And but now we just buy the chicken usually, you know. I had barbecue last week. I yeah. had Dickie's. Oh, Dickies is nice. Yeah, yeah. out of Turkey It's Creek. a Texas chain. Yeah. No wonder. I that explain I walked into Dickies barbecue one day and I saw you and your husband. I like I didn't this is early on before we really knew each other that well. Yeah, I think you were doing weren't we it was some we Marvel dueling, City Opera we were having you were doing something also. Dueling fundraisers, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> at the same day. Yeah. <laughs> like you were there. Not I mean I don't That's kinda strange. Yeah, I don't even know how that really happened. I might have been in there to ask them to pitch them about doing a fundraiser. I don't know. And maybe. you were currently doing one. Maybe. Anyway, we, it's one of those yeah. weird things where we just cross paths at the strangest place. And I'm thinking, you're that lady from the opera that I... <laughs> that I sometimes interview oh, yeah. and talk to sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and in the future, <laughs> you'll be just letting yourself into my house with no... Not even a doorbell. Yeah, we didn't even know that then. Hmm. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mo. Yeah. Mo, great job. <laughs> I'm so glad Mo's here. And uh, maybe on uh, the next show, well, we can talk about the flowers back there, about how I, I got in trouble for, well, you know what all I've done, really the whole story is, I just wrapped a napkin around the Tupperware that they're in to make yeah. it look. You can go back a few episodes and see the Tupperware that yeah. is not supposed to be My there. wife said, why did you let, I can see the Tupperware, why don't you, you put it in a nicer thing? And I couldn't find a nicer thing, so I just wrapped a napkin well, around it. Well, if you had to put it in a nicer thing, wouldn't you have to like, do you have to like transplant it? it? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is good. 
Well, we can talk, yeah, well, next episode we can talk about my crazy gardening plans. Oh, I'm excited to hear about that. I bet. Thank you so much <laughs> for uh, watching and everything. Don't forget the Akima Cabaret coming up on February 18th and 19th. Get your tickets at akimaclub.org. And if you really love audio content like this, check us out on Audible trial.com backslash Frank and Friends show. That's exactly right. Where uh, you can listen to all sorts of things, including our Frank and Friends show podcast, but also um, audio books and custom entertainment that's created just for Audible. And that's kind of where they're headed with this. It's like, you know, they're part of Amazon. Right. And much like if you wanted Amazon to watch Prime. a show that's only on Amazon Prime, you would subscribe. Right. Well, similar concept with Audible. They've got shows that you can only see there. Absolutely. And you can download your see first. See there. Hear. Hear. See. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All be, the things. That would be visible.com. No, it's audible.com. <laughs> but you can download your first choice for free. And yeah. Keep it. During that 30-day trial period, when you go to uh, audibletrial.com slash Frank and Friends show, uh, you get a credit for a free download and they don't ask for it back. I mean, they're confident that you'll enjoy the service and want to stick around and uh, keep keep going. So yeah. But Check then you start out. racking up your downloads and your points and the Audible originals and the books and the things and the so much uh, content. Theatrical performances. I just noticed that one. Guided wellness programs. Wow, I hadn't uh, read all the way down the list yet. Nice. There's probably walking meditations and yeah, all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, you could do that. Yeah. Actually, no. You listen to our show when you're walking. I do. All right. <laughs> that's my walking meditation. <laughs> and that's. <laughs> She's also <laughs> proofing it for errors. <laughs> hey, you know, you might want to. Uh, so thanks again. I'm Frank Murphy. I'm Catherine Frady. And this is The Frank and Friends Show.